Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we talk about a day in the life of IT. In my previous video, we talked about how we can grant a Jamf built admin account and give it a secure token. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can utilize S code and deploy it down to all of our Mac devices, either automatically in like a lab type of environment or on demand using self-service. Um, in the past, we tried to rely on using the app store and just using a VPP, but it just became unreliable. So instead of relying on the app store, I went ahead and just created a developer account, downloaded the latest package of Ash Code, which is at the time of this recording, 13.4.1. And then I went ahead and just uploaded it to our uh, Jamf server. Now, I did use the Jamf Composer app to create the package. Uh, it is a pretty large package, just like 12 gigs. And after it's done installing, it expands out to about 22 gigs. Uh, so when you're getting ready to install this, just be mindful on how long it takes. All right, so with that said, I'm currently logged into our Jamf environment here. And again, you can clearly see the S code package, the policy is up and I'm using a package uh, that's called, you know, EGRS code package 13.4.1. Uh, and again, it is a pretty large package. And then I have a script and the first script is actually installing the S code command line tools. Uh, and then I have a post script. Uh, now the V3 and the V2 is just my iterations of, you know, how many times I had to modify the script. Uh, so we're going to get into the actual install in a moment, uh, but I wanted to just kind of walk you through on what I do to actually use a script. Uh, so a lot of the codes that I get, uh, cause I'm not a very big bash or in this case, Z shell, as you can tell for, as you can tell from the interpreter on the top on the first line, uh, I'm not a very big coder. I mean, if it's not PowerShell, then I'm just going to stay away from it. Uh, so I got this from Jeff.com, Jeff Nation. Guys are awesome and girls are awesome over there. Um, so pretty much what this script is doing is it's just making a log file. And this here is just redirecting everything back to the log. All right. So the first thing we want to do is actually check to see if, if the S cool app is installed. If it is, we're gonna go ahead and, and accept the license agreement. And we're gonna just run a run first launch uh, command. Now the reasons that we do this is because to open S code for the first time, you do need to be an administrator to accept these stuff and to run this stuff. Uh, so to prevent that, I just go ahead and do that uh, by using the Jeff management account. Once we do that, uh, we just go ahead and check on some things. If for some reason the license fail, uh, the license itself fail here, we have some backup stuff that we can uh, do here. Uh, the next thing is adding all of the users to the group developer account. Uh, this is extremely useful so people can actually uh, develop code within S code. Uh, once we do that, uh, we're going to just make the most latest version of S code, the default version to use in our environment. Uh, we only really deal with one version of S code, especially if it's in a lab environment, then we, you know, set up gate, gate gatekeeper, pretty much what gatekeeper does is just bypassing, uh, any errors or any prompts or anything like that. And then the last thing we do is we just install all of the packages that comes with S code. Um, this is probably overkill, but it will prevent, you know, someone asking, Hey, can you install this for me, please? Or if they're in a lab environment, um, and you know, you got 35 computers, you don't want to have to install different packages for each and every class. You just want to go ahead and, and install it and call it a day. Uh, the next thing is uh, we'll go ahead and just set a sleep timer uh, for 45 minutes. And then we do a Jamf um, inventory update. 
And once we do that, we should be good to go. Now, the reason why we do a gem inventory update is we do have a smart group where we have computers that should have S code installed, but it's, it's not necessarily installed. And that's it. Now the, the command line uh, tools, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm not even really going to try to interpret this. Uh, but pretty much what it's doing is checking to see which version of uh, Mac OS you have. Uh, I guess if, if you're, um, if you're between Catalina and something else, or not Catalina, but 10 point something and something else, um, you'll do one thing. Or if you're Big Sur and, and, and later, then you'll do another thing. Uh, but it looks like here. The only thing that we're doing is doing what's known as using the software update and getting the command line tools. Um, again, it's a whole bunch of regular expressions, a whole bunch of if statements that again, I'm, I'm not going to try to really understand. I just know that this works. All right. I found this online and I can't remember where exactly I found it from. Uh, but I, I did find it online and that's really the only things that we do. All right. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up, um, applications folder and just want to show you that there is no X code on this machine. All right. So we're going to go into uh, our self service here and we're going to go ahead and install S code. Now, because S code is about 12 gigs, it will take a while for it to fully install and i just noticed that i do have a typo here but that's fine so let's go ahead and hit install and let it do its thing and i'm not even going to try to speed up the time i'm just going to go ahead and skip to when it's fully installed all right guys so let's code is finally here in the applications folder uh, but it's still running, so it's running those scripts. Uh, so let's look at those paths to see where, not the scripts, yeah, the scripts. Let's look at the paths to see if the actual um, laws are being generated. So it looks like we're still waiting on the uh, S code to finish here. So hopefully uh, we shouldn't be too much longer. All right, so we're definitely making progress here. So you can see that the verify S code has popped up and we can also see here in the top right corner that the updates um, are wanted to be installed. So that is actually coming from this uh, script here, the install S code command line tools, uh, because we're using that software update uh, executable. So once we are good to go from there. I think that should be it. So right now the script, obviously, or well, the policy itself is still running, which means the application is still going. So um, we're going to let this play out. And hopefully the next time I come back, S code should be fully installed. All right. So S code is finally installed. Uh, so you can see here that we have the reinstall script here. And then also I want to point out to see if we can get to the logs. So give me one moment so I can see the logs. Okay. So now we can definitely see the logs here. And again, if we go back to, I believe it was this one. This is everything that we do within the script. And if we actually go into the logs itself. You can actually see that you know this is doing everything S code related, uh, accepting the license, installing everything, the gatekeeper, everything that was in that uh, post install script, we're good to go. Uh, I'm curious. Oh, and also we can see here that we install all the packages, so core types, mobile device, S code system resources, things of that nature, uh, is definitely good to go. So I'm curious if um, we actually installed the. Yep. So this is only for the. Um, 
Safari. So I just wanted to make sure that that update wasn't for S code. So it's only for Safari. So that's okay. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that and get rid of that. Get rid of that and that. One more thing that I discovered, especially in a lab environment, is that sometimes when you try to build a piece of code, uh, you'll get an error. Uh, so if you run this command here, uh, pretty much it's deleting a folder uh, that is a duplicate. Um, after, again, some heavy searching, we discovered that this folder is causing, uh, was causing some issues uh, on uh, our lab machine. So if you delete this, then you should be good to go. I have a, um, I have a once a month process or policy that runs this process, which is just, you know, the remove file uh, command and I just delete it from every computer and that way, you know, uh, S code should be able to run. All right, guys. Uh, so let's just open up S code and make sure that everything works. All right, so here's S code. There's there, it again. It just works. Don't have to really do anything. I can go through and just type everything, and it just works. All right, I don't have to do much of anything. I didn't have to. Oh well. I mean, obviously, if I had a Git repository, I, I'll have to do that, but. That will be on the users themselves. But again, you can see here the S code installed without an issue. And we were we are good to go. So again, again, this just works. I don't have to do anything crazy. The hardest part was literally probably getting the package. The scripts was pretty easy to find, but getting the package and uploading it and all that good jazz, that's what took the longest. Um, and just so I can show you guys, S code is 22 gigabytes, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it was calculating, so I'll wait for it to finish calculating. All right, so I lied. It's not 22, it's 37 gigs. Uh, so it's pretty large package. So if you're trying to deploy this, one, make sure you have the disk space, and two, make sure you have the, the bandwidth and the time to actually install. Uh, this install... I uh, believe it probably took about an hour or so. I'm going to put the exact time on the screen shortly. Oh, another thing you may want to consider, especially with dealing with packages like this, is having some sort of content caching server. Um, so everything can just download to that server, and then your clients will pull from that server. And that way you're not trying to download anything off the internet. You can, you know, if you have 10 gigs connections, you can just download directly from there. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. You guys have been awesome. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Uh, but subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. We got more videos coming on the way. Uh, leave a comment. You know, how do you manage your macOS environment? You guys have been great. And I'll see you in the next video.